Hey there, hunters. So today in Remnant 2, we're going to be doing a walkthrough of the One True King DLC and do a complete item finding guide along the way. At least that we know of. I'm pretty sure it's everything, but yeah. I don't want to waste too much time because it's going to be a very long video, so let's just dive into this. But please check the description below if you want to find items specifically in a more organized fashion. This is going to be a progression video from the fresh pre-generated One True King campaign all the way until the end. So it's going to be in order of how you would find these items, but not necessarily organized. So if you want an organized list, check the description. So we're starting with the predetermined One True King world, and I'll reference where you need to do random worlds and things like that. And actually, we're going to start with Dwell in the Ward once you start up the game. Dwell will now sell you two new mutators, Fetid Wounds and Tainted Blade. Brabus will also sell you this Steel Scythe melee weapon if you want it. So pick this up before you jump into the campaign. In the One True King overworld, you can run over to the first dungeon along the left side, but before you go in, talk to this NPC in the corner, Laywise. He will sell you the Atonement Fold. Plus, you'll need to talk to him later for other things, so get familiar with this guy. From here, we're going to go into the Forgotten Commune, which is the dungeon next to Laywise. And here, the Injectable, which I'm going to be calling Corpse Drop, is right as you enter on the left hand side, you just got to climb up that big ladder. And then you'll be in this like cylindrical sewer area where you're going to see bodies falling down from the sky. The goal is to climb up all the way to the top of this area and kill a couple of elites and after you do all that you'll be able to jump and make this leap to get the castaway ring. Now also in the rest of the forgotten commune you will have two befouled altars which are root nexus like events that will spawn enemies as you try to kill these things. There are two, each one provides a piece of the ritualist scythe which you can then combine together to make the weapon. And then don't forget to talk to the NPC at the bottom of the area after you finish both the altars who's going to transform into an aberration. Killing the Cursed Wretch will grant you the Guts Mutator. And that's going to be pretty much it for the Forgotten Commune. I think there's a patch now so that you will be able to get random rolls like Corpse Drops and stuff like that, so be sure to check out for those. But otherwise, yeah, you know, standard one trait book, one Corpse Drop, and then if you find those, you're good to go. Now we can get out and continue on to the One True King's Overworld. If you move across to the bridge, you're going to come across a preacher yelling at a bunch of Dran. He thinks you smell bad, and then the entire crowd is going to start to murder you. And then he's going to turn into an aberration. You're going to kill the crowd and then kill the dire fiend and then you'll get the dreadful mutator. You're going to need to come back to this guy in another playthrough to listen to his speech entirely while you wear the zealot armor set, which we will get later on. Listening to this speech is going to give you the band of the fanatic ring. There's nothing else special in the overworld for now, so you can just head up the ramp and go right into the next zone, which is going to be the first mandatory zone, which is the sunken hunt. And here you're going to have an injectable for the ethereal manor. This injectable has a lot going on. So the normal way to complete this is that you're going to be pulled into a dream from the Dran guy that's sitting in the house, and then you're going to be taken into the Ethereal Manor dream. You're going to need to collect the amulet in each of the rooms here. You can look into the rooms through like the door opening, and then you can spot the glowing light, which is the quest item, and then open the door because you only get one door to open, or you can just use the Explorer's Treasure Sense perk to see it and pick it up. Picking up the necklaces will progress you one stage deeper into the dream, but picking the wrong door is only going to contain the Dran Dreamer, who is going to reset your dream progression. The neck won't ever be in the same room twice, so it is just a process of elimination to collect the neck like five times. Once you collect it, you will get the Death Soaked Idol, and then you're going to be removed from the manor automatically. Now you can also escape the dream by using your Liquid Escape, which will bring you to the Consecrated Throne area, which will have the Crimson Dreamstone Ring on the throne. And you can't even get both items if you're fast enough. If you collect the neck and then immediately drink your liquid escape and then run to get the ring, you can get it before it automatically pulls you out. Also, if you use your liquid escape to get to the throne and then leave the throne via the checkpoint here and head back to the ward, you will see the Dran Dreamer by the fire near the old ward entrance. And this starts the quest line for the Anguish Gun, but you can watch my video I have dedicated for that because it's a long chain, but it starts here. Now we're back in the Sunken Haunt, and there isn't anything too special here besides a corpse drop, so maybe to pick up that. But then we're just going to be heading over to the boss, which is going to be the Sunken Witch. After you kill the witch, you're going to be getting the Hex Wreath material, which can be used to create the Creeping Mist mod. When we come out to the other side of the boss area, we're going to be in the back of the Forlorn Coast, and shortly up ahead, you're going to see a garden area with a bunch of pigs. While aggressive, one pig will run away, and that's the one that's going to drop you the Digested Hog Lure Ring, so make sure you kill him. If you continue on down to the left hand side down back to the water, you'll get to a checkpoint area with a big bell nearby as well. There are going to be three bells in the overworld that you're going to need to ring and kill the enemies that they spawn to get the dark pack trait. And I'll mark them on the map at the end, but you're going to need to get up to the king's palace before you can get all three, so just keep that in mind. From this checkpoint, there's kind of a lot of winding paths to take, but if you follow the boats in the water, they're going to lead you to a hole in the wall, which ends up being a witch performing a ritual on a pig. 
You can wait and let the witch complete the ritual, which will spawn the mini gorge aberration, which when killed will grant you the executioner mutator. You can also go to the back of the cave here, and on the wall is the ragged poppet for the ritualist archetype. Now we're going to do a little bit of backtracking here and go back up to the pig garden real quick and then go down the well into the pig garden and over to the sewer area. And then there's going to be a ladder on the wall to the left and that will take you to a bone harvester nest with two bone harvesters in it. Kill them and then around the corner of this room we'll have the abyssal hook melee weapon. Down here there's another side dungeon entrance which will take you to the derelict lighthouse. This area will have a random corpse drop item as well as an injectable for any burning city tiles set for loathsome. But otherwise nothing special is here, you can just make your way all the way to the checkpoint at the end. At the ending half of this area, there's going to be two aberrations you're going to have to find, Thunder Pierce and Gore Carver. Killing them will give you the Sleeper Mutator, as well as the key to the lighthouse. Now remember to inspect the key, and then rotate it before you go and start using it, because otherwise they'll just get used up right away. Head towards the lighthouse, and on the left hand side there's going to be an entrance to the basement. Use the key here, and you can pick up the Sparkfire Shotgun. And then you're going to need to go inside the main entrance and up the stairs to the top of the lighthouse and grab the lighthouse keeper's ring. If you didn't inspect the ring and rotate it before using it, you can only open the main entrance door and then that gets consumed, and then you're going to have to come back and do another run to get the spark fire shotgun, unfortunately. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the checkpoint by that bell and head through the foundry, which is on the other side of like the bridge and the boat stuff. Can't miss it. But we're going to continue up this coast here, and if you go around the left hand side of the foundry and don't engage in the fight inside, you'll be able to talk to the bridge warden and he'll give you the bridge warden ring. But if you do engage, he says you smell like blood and he's going to kill you. But you can still talk to him if you're quick enough if you run up to him and spam through all the dialogue before he gets to murdering you. But it is easier just to make him unaggressive, just running up the left side of the foundry. So after we do the bridge warden, just go ahead and cross the bridge and keep going. There's nothing really special until you get up to the next checkpoint. You can continue forward into the mountainside here, and that's going to give you another side dungeon, which is going to be our glistening cloister. In this dungeon, there's going to be a corpse drop item, as well as the invisible vase injectable. Pretty easy to spot. There's going to be a room with a dark mirror floor. If you look into the mirror floor, you're actually going to see a bright glowing vase, which is easy to spot once you know what you're looking for. And then when you see it, you got to shoot that area in your actual side, the light side. And then it'll break the vase and drop the shade stone. You can continue on to the boss as there's nothing else special here in this area. Bruin's fun, but I also happened to hit my 10th Apocalypse death during this fight, which granted me my Participation Trophy and my Orange Slices, but you can get it anywhere, just die 10 times on Apocalypse. But after you kill Bruin, you're going to get the Wretched Skull material that can be used to craft the Ring of Spears mod. And then that's all for here, we can go ahead and leave and then continue up the side of the castle. As you cross the rooftops, you're going to end up in the small courtyard where Big Fatty is, and along with the second bell that you're going to need for the Dark Pack trait. Also here, in my world, is where the Scribe's Tome was. This is a random spawn somewhere on the overworld, so keep an eye out for it, but mine happened to spawn here on this bench. I don't know where all the spawn locations are, but yeah, like I said, keep an eye out for it. Do try to find these tomes because you're going to need to use this thing like four times, and we're going to get to that in a minute. But go ahead and ring your bell, and then kill the enemies, and then continue on until you see the elevator here that's going to be on your left hand side. And then you're going to go down and get the elevator ring, and yeah, that's it. That's weird, right? It's just the elevator is just there for the elevated ring. Anyway, head back up and you can finally go inside the palace. Inside this palace, there's going to be a side dungeon right here next to the checkpoint. And this is going to be the pathway of the fallen side dungeon. And here, you're going to find again a corpse drop, as well as an injectable from any of the hall tile sets in Losum. At the end of the zone, you're going to reach a hedge maze. So you're starting on the dark side. And if you follow the hedge maze onto the left hand side, you'll reach the aberration Wraith Liege, which when killed will drop the Prophecy Mutator, as well as the Memoriam Medallion. And like the Scribe's Tome, you have a lot of options for this medallion. So you're going to need to do this a bunch, but let's get to each of its uses. The first is you can put it into the seal of the room here in the middle, on the dark side, which will give you the Gift of Melancholy Amulet. You can also use the mirror in the back to go to the light side and then head around to the same middle door on the light side, and then using the medallion here will give you the Gift of Euphoria. Also on the light side, if you happen to be wearing the Red Prince's crown, the wall will engulf in flames and reveal a hidden path down to the cremated Soul Ash material, which will give you the Knight's Guard mod. The last thing you can do with the medallion is if you are in a randomly generated Knight Weaver Lonesome World that also rolled the Hedge Maze, you can take this medallion to the Knight Weaver's Nest to trade it in for the Bitter Memento Ring. That's all for this side dungeon, so you can leave and go halfway up the stairs, drop down, and head on out. 
On this side of the castle, there's going to be a shortcut, but also the final bell for the dark pack trait is here. Shoot it, kill the enemies, and get your trait. Continue across the bridge and you will meet the Mangled Atoner aberration. Kill that and you're going to get the Maelstrom Mutator. If you continue down the lighthouse mountainside here, you will see a small fire under the bridge with a lot of hanging bodies. A witch is among these and you can shoot it down to obtain the Zealot's armor. If you continue on, you can drop down and then open up the door to Nimue. Not required, but this is how you would get to Nimue. Alright, now we're pretty much done. You can head back up to the palace and up the stairs and get to the Chamber of the Faithless where the One True King resides. Before we fight the One True King though, we have two things we have to take care of. The first is that now you should decide what you want to do with the Scribe's Tome. Here are your choices. You can give it to Laywise and he will just thank you for not opening it and give you the Index of the Scribe Amulet. You can also inspect and open the Tome to get the Medallion from inside. You can give Laywise the Medallion right away, in exchange he'll give you Burden of the Seolus, I don't know how you say it. Or if you try to give it to him, and then say, oh, this is valuable, and try to force him to barter with it, then he'll give you the Ring of Infinite Damage. Now if that's not all, you can finally take the medallion and head to the scribe's room on the right-hand side of the Chamber of the Faithless, and open the door with the medallion and grab the paper heart inside. The last thing for Laywise is that if you're in a randomly generated world, you can potentially get the Great Hall side dungeon. And if you talk to the Feastmaster here after you've talked to Laywise before, you can tell the Feastmaster that you know Laywise the Scribe, and he will give you some leftovers to bring to the Scribe. Giving Laywise the leftovers, forcibly I might add, will give you the White Glass Ring. If you take back the leftovers, then you can bring it to the Cook and the Ward, and he'll make you a meat shake in like 3 hours. Okay, now on the way up to the King. In the Council Chamber, you can shoot the Council Member on his podium, which will drop the Cost of Betrayal Necklace. And then move on up, and we have all the One True King options to run through. The first thing we can do for the king is say that we'll kill Nimue. He'll give us the Rod of Retribution and then just say go kill her. And if you want to do that, you can kill her and get the Broken Heart Relic. Or you can tell Nimue that you will kill the king. So talk to the king, tell him you'll kill Nimue, talk to Nimue, tell her you'll kill the king. And then we can go kill the one true king. Now his primary kill to get the Agony Spike material for the Monarch Long Gun is to kill him when his mace is in his hand. You can then do the alt kill and kill him when he's kneeling after you break his weapon. This gives you the Tormentor's Pommel, which will make the Wrathbringer melee weapon. Now if you told Nimue that you'd kill the king instead of her, then you're going to get Nimue's Blood Marred Vow, which will then, when you give it back to Nimue, free her and give you the Gift of the Unbound Amulet. Also, if you just killed the king without ever talking to Nimue, you can then go and talk to her after you killed the king, and then she'll give you Jewel of the Beholden Ring. Now also, if you happen to be wearing the Burden of the Divine Ring, which is the King's Wife's Ring, when you kill the King, he's going to drop you the Burden of the Departed Ring. And then finally, while you do get special dialogue options for wearing the Red Prince's Crown or have the Assassin's Dagger on, you don't get any additional rewards. The only other reward for the One True King is that in a random layout, you can get the Gilded Palace Side Dungeon, which has the Red Prince as the boss. If you kill the One True King, and then head back over to the Gilded Palace and offer the Prince your tribute, he will leave and you can go back up to the throne and you can see that the prince will falsely claim the throne saying that he killed the king. But then the prince will reward you with the Crimson Guard armor set so he can have the throne, right? Okay, that is all the items added in the One True King world. Though there are more rings and amulets that you can obtain but these are all corpse drops, being randomly placed in zones across the biomes. Yesha and Nerud each have two rings and an amulet that you'll need to find, which again are just random so go looking. And then Losim as well is going to have a bunch of different rings and amulets, but again, totally random, just have to have luck finding them. Just go out, there's going to be one in every single zone. And that's going to be everything added in the Remnant 2 DLC. I will have a spreadsheet with the items and the locations in the description below. Also, there's going to be timestamps organized for all the items if you want to look it up that way. But that's going to be all for me. Thank you all for watching. Peace and good luck out there, hunters.